You need a fast, reliable network. So get fast internet from Comcast Business and add Comcast Business Security Edge. It helps block threats. Plus, we have 24-7 support. Bounce forward with Comcast Business. Get started with a great offer from Comcast Business. Call for restrictions and complete details. It takes two. Amy Eiler, J.J. Gordon on the Mighty 790 KFGO. Thanks for spending your afternoon with us. We appreciate it. And we've got a special guest for you. We do. A favorite of It Takes Two. It is a favorite of ours and of our listeners. We know it because our listeners talk to us about him. His name is Andrew Oak, and he is the first ladies' man. Andrew, welcome back to KFGO Radio. Amy, JJ, happy holidays to you. How are you both? We're great. Happy holidays to you. Tell us about the holidays at the White House. When did the tradition begin that first lady, one of the first ladies' jobs so to speak is to um is to get the white house in the holiday spirits well it, that's a great question and a lot of these you know when we come around holidays and when it comes to first ladies and their duties so to speak or their roles or their traditions or what they do it's always surprising to me which ones have been around forever or since the very first or you know from from back in the in the uh uh you know late 1700s and and into the early 1800s and which ones are fairly modern and we just accept them and think that they've been around forever or think that it's the role or the duty and always has been cuz that's the way it's been in our lives and keep in mind there's no job description for first ladies there's no they don't have to do anything they're not paid they're not elected i say this every time i'm on with you guys but when we put it into that perspective you know all the stuff that they're doing is kind of extra i mean it comes along with all the stuff that that goes along with being married to the president but it's it's not anything that that they have to do or is mandated and they really are doing this for the greater good and doing it for all of us so all that being said the very first christmas tree to appear in the White House, and this was upstairs in the second floor for the for the family. This was not a public Christmas tree. The first Christmas tree was decorated and put in, in the White House in the late 1890s by First Lady Caroline Harrison. So Christmas trees aren't even a very long tradition uh, in, in well, I mean, you know, 1800s are quite quite some time ago, but, you know, it's not something that we've just always done since the beginning of time or anything that the the colonists uh, would have brought over from from England in the old country. And the, so and you're talking about one, the private residence of the president. Yeah. So it's not even that they did one to the public or in in the other spaces of the White House yet. Right, right. So this wasn't like a big, you know, I I as far as wreaths and other things that people decorated and the good cheer and Santa Claus, you know, all that kind of stuff, I think, has, has been around um, for, for a long time and, and come over from, from Europe and things like that. But as far as decorating a Christmas tree, now what's interesting is that, that that first Christmas tree goes in in the late 1890s. The first Christmas tree that was open to the public or on display for the public was put up by one of my favorite first ladies, Lou Hoover, and that's in the 1930s. Um, and the Hoover Christmas story is is very interesting. There was there was a three four five alarm, some uh, fire uh, in the White House on Christmas Eve. Um, the the Hoovers had decorated the first Christmas tree for the public, and public was able to come in and out. And security was much less. We didn't have to do as much as we do today. Um, but you know, more people could come in and, and see the Christmas tree than than happens now. Uh, but they were having a private Christmas party for. Um, for White House employees, staff, and their families in one side of the White House and the other side a fire broke out. And President Hoover actually left the party and went with Washington, D.C. firefighters to help put out the fire. Later, Mrs. Hoover would take charred wood and things from the demolition that had to take place in the White House and make Christmas ornaments out of the wreckage to be sold for local charities. Oh so, my goodness. you know, these first ladies have, uh, yeah, they've always taken these opportunities to take a, 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 a bad thing or an unpleasant thing and turn it into try and help. And they've just, they've just always, for the most part, had this, this presence of mind to just take care of the less fortunate and, and, and do good things for people outside of politics, outside of, you know, the uh, uh, political parties. I always think that the White House Christmas decorations are people wait to find out what they're going to look like mm-hmm. because they set trends, right? They're mm-hmm. trend-setting decorations. 
I'm curious. Is there a, do you know is there a budget that these women are are working with right now to try and come up with this, or is this sort of <laughs> something where we know it's important for when we host people from other countries and and the deals that are taking place in the White House that we need to put this forward? JJ, that's such a that's such a great question, and and you know so much of of what goes into the White House is that pomp and circumstance, that diplomatic putting our best foot forward, looking better, especially as we started this country. We needed with so with no history and this fledgling country, I'm talking about, you know, like like revolutionary times and, and right after the war of eighteen twelve and, and when when we really were gaining our independence and making our mark. But you look at going into modern times and something as traditional as the White House China pattern or things like that. I'm old enough to remember in the news, Nancy Reagan got a lot of grief for for spending too much money on China or replacing China. Well, nearly every first lady since Elizabeth Monroe. Elizabeth Monroe is the first first lady to have official White House China, and she caught grief about it because she ordered it from a French company and everything in the White House was supposed to be American because we were like, go America, and you got to buy American, uh, forgetting, of course, that the French helped fund the revolution and get us our independence. But that's that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> but a lot of what, what, what goes into this these White House decorations is exactly that. I mean, we need to look, and now even more so, you know, we have, we've got a big, on the, on the mall, we've got a big um, menorah. And, and um, I think George H.W. Bush, I could be wrong on that. I think, and maybe it was even go back to Carter, I think. But one of those guys was the first to celebrate Kwanzaa in, in the White House and have that represented. And we're trying to represent more people and as, as, we, as we grow and we get more uh, um, uh, in, in touch with those, those communities and those demographics. I don't know the exact budget and how it goes through and how it's appropriated. Um, you know, it's got to be somewhere, and someone's got to pay for it. I know that there's a lot of volunteer work. You know, you can volunteer to help decorate, and um, and uh, uh, there's there's a veterans tree. This is how I get my uh, private White House tours of, of of Christmas decorations, and and even group tours, and going in the regular with the, with you know regular uh, public that goes in through the day. My publishers are veterans, and there's a veterans tree um, that is uh, uh, has always been in the White House in in modern times that is decorated by veterans organizations, USO, Wounded Warriors, things like that. And a lot of volunteer work goes into doing that. Um, and it's a great honor to have, you know, your your farm chosen to grab the tree from and, and put it in. So there, there is a lot of planning. There's definitely a budget that goes into it, but it's something that is expected at this point to, to again, to represent our country the way we do. I mean... I don't want to throw any first ladies under the bus, but our current first lady sort of put Christmas on blast because of how much work it was in a leaked call. I'm sure you've heard no, that. We did. don't need to, we don't need to put first ladies on blast, but she really she really did. <laughs> well, she did. You know, and 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 this is interesting. It brings up an interesting topic. It's from from the very first time uh, Melania Trump decorated the White House, she got blasted. Yeah, and I always thought it was very interesting. Because you see these these lines crossed over the course of time, and it's anything from like you used to not speak about uh, women negatively in in the print or on TV, and and you used to not. I mean, even the press used to not re record. You know, uh, very famously, JFK would walk up to the airplane, would walk up to Air Force One, wave, and all of the cameras would get turned off. It was just mandated. Everyone did it out of respect for the president because he couldn't walk up the steps. JFK's back was so bad and he was on so much painkillers and other stuff that he had to walk around to the back of the plane and take an elevator up. But the press didn't want to show that because the press didn't want the president to look weak to anyone. And now it's like we're looking for any weakness yeah. and we're looking for any sign of, 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 you know, that might show someone in a poor light or like that gotcha moment or put him on blast, like you say. So I always found it very interesting. Melania Trump comes from the, the world of high fashion. The world of supermodel and and all that kind of stuff. Vogue magazine was one of the first ones to blast her first decoration, saying they looked like Nightmare Before Christmas and Tim Burton. I saw them. I went in. They were fantastic, and they were pretty on par, as JJ was saying. You know that that people look like. Well, these are the lights I'm going to use, and these are the ornaments and the wreaths and the colors and the. You know, we do we do take these women's style guides and and put them into our everyday life. 
And I'm I'm not kidding you. I thought and then the very next the very next the second one she did, they said it was like the shining, like a horror film and the river of blood that ran from the red red is a color of Christmas. Sure it's also a color of blood, but it's a color of a lot of things. It's a color in our flag, you know? And to see the way she got glasses, I mean, and it's just it's this it's this growing trend of people, if they don't like the president or the husband, of which we seem to be more and more divided on election after election, term after term, that they don't like the wife or the first lady. And now they're going after everything, and they're going after the holidays. Look, you know, don't like Melania Trump. It, it really, it's, it's no skin off my teeth. But why don't we leave the holidays alone? You know, why don't we have some cheer and say, hey, these are, these are really pretty decorations. And also, Christmas and the holidays are always over the top. What ornaments aren't? What wreaths aren't, and <laughs> yeah. the taste is just, you know, it's relative. And, and the fact that they, and so I kind of, you know, it, it's funny because I've, I've, I've listened to so many tapes and so many recordings and so many of these people, these politicians' friends. You know, you go back to the Clinton, and, and, and we don't need to drag all that through the dirt. But, you know, all of that came out after some person told another friend or who they thought was a friend something in confidence and they recorded the whole thing, the conversation. Like I've yeah. said a lot of things over the years to a lot of people who I thought were friends. And you, you let your hair down. You get a little raw. And if I were Melania Trump, I'd be frustrated too. And if I was talking to a friend, I'd be like, you know, I, I'm going to do these decorations again. And I don't know why, because I'm going to get blasted for them. And they're going to compare me to a horror movie together <laughs> again. And this really stinks, you know? And it's, yeah. it's, it's a real bummer. Absolutely. So, I don't want Absolutely. Melania walking through my house and judging my Christmas decorations because I've got an old sweat sock that was turned into a reindeer when I was five <laughs> that is hideous. No. So I, I understand where you're coming from, sir. I mean, that's just, I just, I always take that. There, there's so many people, again, especially nowadays, and, and, and not, the, not the majority. I mean, the majority of people are wonderful. The majority of people who, who have bought my books and read these books, all these people who are buying my books and reading my books and interested in these things, and listen, they're listening because they want to, not because they want to slam people. In the, but there is a minority. There's a group out there that's, that's always trying to just dig at people. And it just, I don't know, it just, it doesn't, it, it especially on something like holiday decorations. I see no value in it. I just right. see zero value in it. Okay, so who is the first to have a themed Christmas tree? Because there is a theme. What we're talking about is every First Lady sort of has their own theme to Christmas, but I think Christmas used to be just a bunch of ornaments on a tree and no one came up with a color scheme. Right, right. No, when when Lou Hoover, that's exactly, so, so you're, you're, you're right, Amy. Lou Hoover put the first Christmas tree up, but it was just a tree and ornaments like you would have in your house. I don't know if they had JJ's sweat sock on the tree or something like that, but probably something similar and, and, and familial and, and, and kitschy like that. So, so the first first lady to have a theme was Jacqueline Kennedy. No surprise. I mean, she really was on the ball with this kind of stuff and history and making things make sense and making things mean things. And her theme was the Nutcracker Suite. Aww. So that the White House was done up like the Nutcracker Suite. And since then, just because... You know, I guess Lady Bird Johnson and, and everyone after that was like, well, this seems like a fine idea. So let's do that. And this year's theme is America the Beautiful. Um, and, and I think it's I think it's lovely. I think it's delightful. Oh, I, she, I, 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 really, I really like this year's decorations. I, I, yeah, I me mean, too. And this, she, yeah. she's thrown a little be best in there, which she's also caught grief for, you know, I mean, because. It's just it's what happens nowadays. But she's got her be best, and she's got kids that have sent ornaments in from different states, all represented. One of the most beautiful themes that, that never got seen, unfortunately. I mean, you can see it now, or it hasn't seen now. But uh, Christmas right after nine eleven, um, so it would have been December of two thousand one. Uh, Laura Bush's theme was home for the holidays, and on the on one of the big trees in the White House, she had represented either at the home state or the actual home of every president. You know, she had a log cabin for Lincoln, and she had Mount Vernon for George Washington. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tree that they then erected uh, when the George W. Bush Museum opened in Dallas. They put the tree up with all the ornaments they say, but they weren't letting people in the White House because, my God, we didn't know what was going on or, or who was on right. what side of anything. You know, we really had to be careful with security. 
but but they, there's a, a just a, a beautiful beautiful and, and remarkable um, exhibit or tribute to 9/11 as a whole at the George W. Bush Museum in Dallas, and the um, the Christmas tree from that Christmas was part of it, at least at the be- at beginning. It's been a, a few years since I've been to Dallas to see the the museum to be through the museum. It may still be there or may not, but it, but it was delightful. Home for the holidays, which I thought was just um, uh, just a remarkable theme and, and a beautiful tree. Okay, I'm going to have to go look it up now. Andrew Oak is the first ladies' man. Find him at firstladiesman.com, and you can order your books there as well. Andrew doesn't have to do it, so I'll do it for him. But if you are ordering Mr. Andrew Oak's book, he has two volumes, Unusual for Their Time, The First Ladies. Um, You order them on his website, firstladies.com. You might have to pay shipping, but that's okay. It's only five bucks. You'll be fine. Um, but, you know, when you're <laughs> when you're an independent person like Andrew Oak... You're not getting much from an Amazon sale or these other people that are selling your book. So if you can always buy the book from the person who wrote it, it's just going to do so much more for them than it is for these big companies who are selling the books. Not that we don't love that Amazon is selling books because we do. But if you can go to firstladiesman.com for all of your gift giving needs, this is a great, I know people are much more into books now during the pandemic than they've been in a long time. The history buff on your list is going to love these things. They sit on the shelf at my home and I'm very proud of them. Oh, and your new library wall. Yeah, they're gorgeous on there. Oh, yeah. JJ built a new like library wall. Yeah. Okay. You guys are so great. Thank you. I, I, I throw in just an extra thing is that my tactical 16 is my publisher and it's an independent veterans group. It's an independent group of veterans that started a publishing company. So when you order directly from Tactical 16 or myself at firstladiesman.com, the veterans get more money. So it's not even a me thing, you know. It, and, and, and this publishing company helps veterans write and publish their own books and stories, which we've found helps with PTSD and some of the anxiety that goes along with uh, coming out of combat and things like that. So it's just a really good way to give back and, and thank those uh, folks that, that helped uh, preserve and, and, and establish this great country of ours. Andrew Oak, thanks so much for your time. We love having you. Thanks, guys. Happy holidays. You too. The S&P is up 21. The Dow is up 173. And the Nasdaq is up 48. It's been all green on Wall Street. How did egg markets close? Sam Halston. Go-